I'd wet the bed. I mean, I wet the bed till I was about 30 anyway. Cause I, did you too? Not till th- until I was like a teenager. Oh, that's nothing, bro. And uh, and and that was a pretty crazy night. Hold on one second. You wet the bed till you were 13? <sighs> Pro- I don't know. Be probably honest. around there, I would guess, yeah. I got to watch you like a hug. Damn. Those people always arsonist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. It might have been a little bit, like, maybe not 13, but close, maybe 10, at least. Well, 10 ain't far from 13 if you're talking at least. <laughs> <laughs> Probably fucking. <laughs> no, but yeah, I had, a, I had a huge issue with it. It was terrible. Dude, I used, to t- I used to have those buzzer underwear, bro. They put these underwear on you when the urine would hit them, a buzzer would go off, oh right? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not joking. Look them up online. This ain't no joke, bro. So I went to my grandparents. My mother didn't tell them that I had these, right? I'm really hoping these are a real thing and not just a, like a torture device your parents put on you. Not at all, bro. They made by themselves. This doctor gave them to us, dude. This dude was a bona fide. Like Google. This dude was a bona fide doctor. So we went there. I got the electric pants on, dude. You know? <laughs> Wait, wait, what'd you like Google? I'm um, getting my rest. Probably, uh, you know, buzzer underwear for urinators. Uh, I would Google buzzer underwear for urinators. Um, and uh, so then, <laughs> but they didn't tell my grandfather, right? So he fucking, and they had a small house, bro, a little bitty house. So my fucking crotch is just, bu- like, he he wakes up middle of the night, dude. I'm fucking. <laughs> You're on fire? <laughs> I'm not on fire, but I'm buzzing hard, bro. Because I'd had apple juice, man, and I pissed big on apple juice, dude. I fucking spray out on the AJ. So I'm in there just buzzing, dude, and I didn't oh know. God. And he came in. They he still didn't... got him? Yeah. Give me a pair, Lee. He didn't, he didn't that's know. That's what I want. Give me a pair. He didn't know I'm, what was going on. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, that's what, he comes I, in. He's scared, how bro. How loud is it? How loud is this? In a little thing? bitty house, you could uh, you could hear it from down I the hall. I just want to wake my wife up in the middle of that, like, <laughs> twice a week. <laughs> I would just do two drops, and you, and it goes off. <laughs> and uh, and so my grandfather's in there, right? And he's all scared and shit. And uh, oh, this would have been terrible when I was a kid. And he's pushing me with a broomstick, dude. He thought I was dead, dude. He didn't know what had happened, and we thought I was possessed or dead. He's pushing me with a broomstick to wake me up, and he was worried because he had one of those heart makers, and uh, he was worried he would get electrocuted. He thought something was happening. He thought the house had short circuited it, or the or the phone company had fucked up. That's what he thought the phone company had fucked up. So he thinks I'm fucking just laying there buzzing like I was a fucking miscreant. But he died, man. My grandfather ended up dying. Oh. He died. I man. love people. I love laughing. I love laughing at shit like this. That's, you can't write this shit. I forgot about that. I write that down. I did, man. Oh. Why did I let Lee talk me into eating mushrooms on a Wednesday night? Like, look at your head, Lee. <laughs> look at Lee, bro. Open your eyes, bro. I can't. Damn, dude. What the fuck? Lee, you're already fucked up. You, you gave me 800 before. They let me oh, we're in training. I told you. When you go down yeah, to fuck, Lee. when you join the Marines, they don't send you to yeah. Miami. You know, with a fucking seagull. No, they send you to fucking Paris Island debt. What Marines are they putting Lee in? My own private <laughs> Marines. Oh, yeah, this is the church. What's happening now, dog? I love it, bro. We got our own Marines. They Look. come in all shapes and sizes. Hey, Amen. Well, then listen me, man. Lee's got a use in the Marines. When you, you know, no, know. I don't. Yeah, Lee, yeah, you I, do. we'll, we'll get three dudes to throw you through that fucking plate glass window. And three <laughs> guys in here, you come flying through with a helmet. You know how much damage you could do? Yeah. Lee, Lee. Come hey, on. Well, why, why are you going to throw me as. I, I was, I'm not sleeping. I was just trying to imagine being like a, no, a human two guys, battering one ram. Guy, yeah, but you, yeah, you, you could do that. I could guy. see that. We'll put some shoulder pads on you mm-hmm. and a fucking helmet with no t shirt on. You come yeah. through that window. <laughs> no you have no idea. You thought that black dude scared those three white kids. You ain't seen nothing yet. With a SWAT stick on your forehead, <laughs> oh, with a you beard, got to. nobody's going to stop you. you got no, to. People will put their guns up and go, nah. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, it's not even worth it. This guy's got a SWAT stick on his head with a helmet (laughs) and a fucking pair of shoulder pads. He's showing up like he's got bad intentions. Yeah, bro. Oh, you should run for governor in that outfit, bro. What's up, Lee? You have a good time last night? Where do you get all those hamsters from? Well, they breed them in our town. I used to work for this group. They used to sell tattooed hamsters and guinea pigs after... uh, They tattoo them? Yeah, they used to brand them with concerts and raves. They would say it's tattooed just to make people not be as sad about it. But it was a brand, bro. <laughs> brand, bro. Of what? With like a uh, heat and ink, bro. For what? Like what did it say? 
Uh, three eleven, Green Day, anything like of different bands that were coming to town. <laughs> toadies. <laughs> Swear to God, up. bro. Toadies, Acid Bath, uh, who else? Uh, rave. Whatever, bro. We used to truck these hounds into the city and fucking <laughs> vend them, bro. <laughs> we did, man. Because there wasn't much there wasn't much work in our town, dude. You know, you had to get what you could get and they had a man that bred hamsters. And uh, and then they had to do the, the tattoos, and they fucking met up, and that was a merger. That's big business, you know. And they started uh, a merger. They started doing it. Man, <laughs> I got me some three hundred mouse in my house and shit. And some other guys like, you know what, man? I'm a pretty good tattoo artist. <laughs> That's Louisiana, <laughs> and that's it. A merger is formed. <laughs> that means someone listening to this right now has had a hamster with like a band label on it. Like, Who the fuck it? buys a hamster? Listen, if I went to a concert, do you think I'm bringing a hamster home with fuck fucking yeah. ACDC? No, I'm not. No, I'm no, not. I'm, I'm about gonna be, to rock. I'm gonna be <laughs> fucked up the whole night with this hamster in my. But pocket. when you leave, when you leave, Coco, when you leave the place, that's when we get you, bro. You get it there. Hey, people are leaving. They're on ecstasy pills. They're on Molly. You leave. You get that fucking hands. You get that warm little piece of God in their hands. They buy it every time, yeah. bro. Oh, my God. Did you ever see him again? Yeah, the next day. Oh, okay, was a good okay. He just died six months ago. Poor oh, guy. man. He bought a Subway sandwich, went outside, and opened it, and killed the whole flat. He didn't even eat the sandwich. He just looked at it and killed him. <laughs> That's how he died. That's the truth. He just bought a subway sandwich and he fucking had a heart attack. He walked outside. You got us with the quiz, though. I'm telling you, though, that subway that should have killed a motherfucker. I've been telling Lee for years. One day he's like, you know, man, I. I, I, (laughs) Lee's like, I thought about what you said, man. And I think you're right. Those people have no respect for bread. No I, had a, I had a guy who worked at Subway told me Lee was in there twice a day, every fucking day at attention, dog. Damn. That's how loyal. <laughs> this motherfucker had a loyalty card. Damn, he, he, bro. He knew the Mexicans and the handicapped fucking... That chick that don't lift the right hand because he got hit by a car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He won't fuck. He knew her name. He knew everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew the shifts. They got a one hand. Is, you knew their shifts? Oh, he knew shifts. He knew who gave me more lettuce. <laughs> Jesus fucking <laughs> They knew who I'm telling you. He was like the fucking co-assistant manager. Wow, bro. That's but crazy. Kirk Lorenzo man. in real life died <laughs> fucking six months ago. Rest in peace. Like man. everybody, sh- it was mm-hmm. shocking. Yeah. He bought a Subway sandwich. How they knew was they had to get the cameras from the Subway sandwich. <laughs> place, <laughs> and they saw him sit down and open it up. <laughs> he smelled that motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't kick the bucket. <laughs> like, he's your dear friend. <laughs> what, Tilly? What he he's, like, he's your dear friend. And, and he kicked the bucket. Yeah. Oh. It's oh. sad, man. Oh. Dude, oh. rest in peace. Yeah, yeah rest in peace for oh sure, God. man. I, uh, for <laughs> Okay, you just got to monitor what's going on because I just, I, yeah, I don't like to, I didn't like to party. I just like to put myself in a crazy situation. Fuck bro. yeah, me too. You know, I was. That's what I was thinking about the whole time you're saying that. I go, yeah, I don't miss the drugs. I miss the six o'clock on a diner or waking up and some girl gives you an Audi to drive home. I, yeah. and you're like, what the fuck just happened last night? Yeah, dude, I was in Louisville one time. I came out of a show. <laughs> they had a big group in a limousine. They invited me to go to an after party with them. Right. I was like, I'm only coming if my boy can come. And I'm like, who's your boy? And I'm like, Le Cedric. They had a brother nearby, right, wearing this <laughs> Louis Vuitton jacket, dude. Probably about 60% homeless, right? And they're like, that's your boy? And I didn't even talk to this dude, right? I was like, yeah, that's my boy. And like, all right, he can come. So I fucking walk over to him, look him right in the eyes. And I was like, what's up, man? I'm Theo. He's like, Le Cedric. And uh, I was like, all right, dude, I told these people you're my friend. You ever been in a limousine? He's like, nah. I was like, all right, come get in with us. Just act like you're my friend, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to a party. He's like, all right, man. So we go in the limo, bro. We're in there, hot chicks, dudes, people fucking. Lil Cedric kept saying, we're friends. That's what he kept saying out loud, right? <laughs> kind of fucking not the best actor, bro. But did we get to this house party? It's a nice, cool fucking party, bro. <laughs> I'm downstairs. I'm in the kitchen. Somebody's making us a drink. I'm talking to somebody. Fuck is six minutes later, right? I hear a fucking somebody scream. I hear a window break, right? 
somebody comes running down they said some dude just stole like four purses out of the coat room upstairs and fucking jumped out a window that would have been me Doug and that was I... fucking Le Cedric bro uh, and that was like but and everybody there was like crying and pissed and some girl was like furious because all her tampons were in there or something. I remember she got pissed. She was a tough girl. She was like one of those, uh, what are those people that slide the thing on the ice, she said? Curlers? Curl. <laughs> yeah, she was a curler. And, uh, but I was, in my head, I was like, this is the best fucking night ever. <laughs> No, that's uh. so just shit like that. Where I just love to put life just in precarious situations. You see a lot more smacking, smacking ruse where you're from. Oh, you down know? south. I saw a brother take a bite out of a Vietnamese guy once, dude. <laughs> Took a bi huge bite out of his fucking arm, bro. Meat and everything, bro. Ripped oh, it right out. Jesus. The Vietnamese guy was like threatening him with all this karate shit and everything, and his brother just grabbed him and fucking bit right into him, dude. <laughs> bit right you into think him. Think about it. That's the way to do it. Oh, yeah. That stops karate all the time. Because oh, yeah. I don't care what type of karate you got. They ain't got no defense for the bite. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nobody got. Well, what if a motherfucker goes to bite you? <laughs> oh, my God. Hold on. I got to call the main Jap and fucking Okinawa. Yeah. And get these Hold on. Let me put my Komodo on, dude. And they bite your ass, dude. And you uh, remember that every time you try uh, to fucking hug somebody and if you got a little divot in uh, it. You know, you got a speed bump in your fucking hug. Why did I let yeah. Lee talk me into eating mushrooms on a Wednesday night? Like, and we'll lock the door and make bets to see how long it takes before Lee comes shooting out the window. Oh, we locked a thick. We locked this, oh, uh, we'll this lock big girl in. in our town. We locked this big girl one time. We ate some acid. And we locked this big girl into a room at this party. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we kept going in there with fucking pots of fucking warm water, fucking pouring it on. I feel bad. I feel horrible, dude. I didn't look. We was kids and we are on acid, dude. <laughs> and, uh, and then, bro, you can't tell me this story when I'm straight. You gotta tell me I'm mushrooms. You locked the girl. I just remember. How old were you? I just remember. How old it. were you? Probably sixteen. Oh, that's terrible. I know, but here's the thing. Let's say I was fourteen. That way, it makes it sound not that's as bad. Terrible. <laughs> but look, she <laughs> ate. ate. <laughs> no, she ate acid with us, bro. She ate acid with us, dude. And what happened was, and we kept going in the room with like these pots of warm. I don't know why we had the pots of warm water because I think we just were fucked up, dude. And we would really, like pour a little on her, but not like torches. She, she wasn't in a cage or nothing. She was just, you know, free range in this room, right? But I think she was scared to come out. And then one time we went in, bro. We heard this loud sound and we went in. And I she, why. she had ran against one of the walls so hard, bro. <laughs> Had fucking moved the entire wall in this house, dude. Huge girl, about two, 240 pounds. Beautiful girl, too. We live in a small town, dude. I mean, I What's remember. The population? Uh, we probably had about 2,000 growing up. Oh, shit. This one dude I remember was trying to be an Elvis impersonator. He said he was an Elvis impersonator, <laughs> bro. But he was just uh, a fucking alcoholic. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't need any Elvis, bro. You know? We got 2,000 people. We need fucking gas money. And we, we need, need jobs. Good, yeah, we need ideas, oh. bro. <laughs> Give us some fucking ideas. Those fucking Elvis impersonators are a pain in the ass. Dude. Oh, they're, they're the worst, really dude. Are. They really are. Get dude. a fucking life, they, I got to tell you something. You know, I told Lee before, when I first got into comedy, when I got serious about it in 94, there was a guy in Denver who used to go to Comedy Works. And I knew his haircut looked familiar. You yeah. know, when you look at somebody you're like, their haircut looks familiar, but who am yeah. I? I'm on Coke, pills. <laughs> you know, I'm eating badass. I, I'm eating bad. I got terrible <laughs> habits. Who am I to fuck around with somebody's haircut? I got fucking terrible you know? habits. And all of a sudden, I get a call from the guy and he goes, hey, I'm doing a gig. Uh, you know, dog in those days, 50 bucks, you oh, know, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, I'll be there now. And I show up and he comes to the door and he's got away 350 and he's got the belt on, mm. the whole Elvis suit. And, Damn. you know, I mean, the guy is, did you Elvis. know that was going to be like that? No. Yeah. Oh. I knew the whole time I was at home preparing for this shit. No. <laughs> when I walk in the fucking door, there he is. Oh, all fucking that. bigger than life. And I hate I'm it like, when they surprise you. And he's that. like, I'm the Elvis in person. They just do 10 minutes in front of me. And you know what? I think I was supposed to get 50 bucks. He gave me a yardstick. Wow. And then he calls me three months later. He goes, hey, I opened up a bar. Hilarious. Uh -huh. So I get to this bar. It's Wednesday nights. He's the main act. Uh -huh. And he brings up three comedians. And at the end, he sings all those Elvis songs. And he's fucking horrible. Yeah. I mean, he's fucking horrible. <laughs> he's smoking cigarettes. Uh -huh. His teeth are green. Yeah, they're he's horrible. He's boozing. <laughs> he's fucking fat. 
he had let himself go. But it sounds he, like Elvis. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit, but, but, not, sounds but like no Elvis. voice. No but voice. you know what this guy did? He was an Elvis impersonator, and someone that was his claim to fame. I mean, the whole inside of the club was Elvis themed, right? But it had a wall of write ups about him. You know, huh. all the awards he won and shit. <clears throat> he was a Vegas boy, and he was no good. Maybe at some point he was. I mean, you know, at this point, and he uh, he fucking uh, bought this club. They bought him out in Vegas. Like, they bought him out because his voice is so bad. I don't fucking know. <laughs> and he went to Colorado and opened up a fucking little bar. Like, it wasn't even a bar, guy. It was like an old, like a... An old boutique that he turned into a bar during the week. And he sang Elvis songs. It was a woman's closet. <laughs> hysterical. Hysterical. But you know what, man? Whatever the guy said, he would always pay me. He'd pay me double. Wow. He never tried to stick a finger up my ass. He never did drugs or nothing. But he always bought me a drink. He'd go, take a drink. You know, don't. I, he goes, I'm not going to give you two because I'm not going to be responsible for you driving. Right. Even if you have money, I don't want you to drink in here. Go drink next door. Yeah. But he was solid. Like he liked me as a comic, and he always paid me, and he didn't blow smoke up my ass. It's not like he was gonna make a video and take me to Vegas. Thinking back, I, and I forgot his name, and I'm really sorry. Good dude. He, he was, was just a, a terrible Elvis. Yeah. You think I wonder if Elvis fucking no. I think if Elvis came back to life, he'd shoot half these in person. <laughs> Like that's hell for Elvis. Like that's his. Oh, hell. That's a great movie. Ooh, Elvis like, comes back Elvis and comes fucking back and kills goes all the impersonators. fucking impersonators, dog. That's it. All the bad ones are the make it. Da, 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 da. Instead of ISIS coming in and shooting everybody, it's Elvis. a fat Elvis with a missing leg and he's decapitated neck and shit. And he, he shoots people. He goes to the kitchen. He takes something. He leaves and shit. And the cops don't mess with him because it's Elvis. They know it's yeah, Elvis. This dude was like, the worst, bro. He was the worst, and he wasn't like he had no work. They let him dress up like they dress him up like Santa around Christmas. Let him wave at the trains and shit coming into town. Mm -hmm. You know, like seasonal greeter. You know, and uh. And he'd always like, like you'd see him, and he'd be like, "Oh, uh -huh. you know." It's like, get the fuck out, Give it a dude. Break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you what, just it's just us. You're an alcoholic. Yeah, you, you know? don't fucking Elvis in person. You're not even in uniform. You're in an alley right now. And uh, his kids, he made him be Pentecostal. He had four kids, no mom. He made him be Pentecostals. Kept him in the yard. What's Pentecostal know? mean? It just means they wear like big clothes and believe in like God. Like I think a lot. We had this dude, Mr. Larry. We had this black kid in our school, Mr. Larry. He got held back so long they just made him a janitor one time in middle school. He was there probably. I remember him being like, he could piss. His trick was he'd come in while you were peeing at the urinal and he'd piss over you. What? In the urinal. And uh, and finally, he was in fifth grade for so long, they just made him a janitor. <laughs> I mean, he's probably still, if that school's still open, he's probably still there. Can you imagine only being in the fifth grade and they pull you aside? Listen, we've been talking here. The staff has been talking. It's not going to work out for you. But lucky for you, we have an opening in the janitorial services department. What does that mean? You know, Listen, we'll give you a dollar for every dollar. We'll match it so you can join the Army when you're 30. I just love that. That probably means he was at least 16 or something. So that was, what, like seven uh, times going through the fifth grade? Let me tell you something. When He's I was a, beautiful a kid, guy. if you were stupid. He's really they, handsome, too. Listen, when I was a kid, if you were stupid, they pulled you aside when you were 16. Yeah. The teachers at school pull you aside and go, listen, <laughs> oh my God. you're wasting your time here. Yeah. When you get to high school, just sign out, get yeah, a job right. as a mechanic. I yeah. swear to God, teachers were honest in the 70s. Well, that's a better way. Now that they want everybody to push forward. Dude, I remember the first wigger went to our school. I told you guys that before. The first wigger, this kid, Brian St. Pierre, went to our school. And he... Uh, They'd never seen it before, you know, and they thought he was mentally handicapped. They put him in, they made him eat the third lunch, you know, the third lunch, the special lunch where those kids are in there, you know, they make some of their own food and then they eat it, you know, to make them have a, a talent. And uh, <laughs> and he was in there, dude, this wigger. So you'd have like, you know, you have like kids who were really had mental illnesses and, you know, everything, all the DS and everything. And then you'd have fucking Brian St. Pierre wearing a Charlotte Hornets pullover, <laughs> dribbling an invisible basketball all day, bro. Just posting up mental kids in the lunch line, bro. They'd never seen it. They thought he was mentally handicapped just because he wanted to, you know, play with the brothers. So, so different times. They had him cook lunch every day still? Like, he didn't say anything? Once a week, they'd have him make some of their own recipes for lunch, you know? It's kind of, it was cool. I mean, we had a good we had a good group of handicapped kids at our school, <laughs> I remember. But the best walk we did was in the park where he used to play basketball. Yeah? It was open. I took her in the park. 
And now they replaced the hut. There used to be a hut in there. And one of the most racist things I ever heard come out of a person's mouth was in that fucking hut that me and everybody in the park looked at each other and just kept fucking shaking our heads. Damn. There used to be a hut there, and the guy's uh -huh. name was Mr. Kennel. Uh -huh. His two sons are still alive, or the one son's still alive. Nice kid. I always liked Jackie's, his name. <clears throat> this has to be 1975. Uh -huh. <clears throat> we're in this park, and we're just playing tag, whatever the fuck you play when you're 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. There was a basketball court, but in those days, we weren't allowed in the basketball court. The older kids were drunk. Unless they picked you, you couldn't fucking. So we just played, whatever, and the monkey bars and shit. Chill. And that hut was there, and it was the summertime. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that Mr. Kennel was in that hut. And there was, you know. He was coming in there? No, he was sitting in there with a fan on him in this little hut, and the window was slide open. And he's sitting there, he's got his glasses on. Mr. Kennel's got to be 40. Right. And there's eight Spanish kids, 20 Italian kids, uh -uh. you know, six Irish kids. And one fat black girl. Blowing with, him? With a huge, no, no. With a huge Julius Irving afro. She's a little kid. Right. She's got to be tiny. She's just, oh. you know, she's throwing rocks at the kids. They're all throwing rocks at each <laughs> yeah. other. They're all having a good time. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, one of the white kids spits at Marlo. And Marlo spits back at the white kid. Uh -huh. And Mr. Kennel sees this. Now, we're over here. Uh -huh. I don't know what the fuck we're doing. He sees this and he slides open the window and he pops his head on the window and goes, Hey, don't let that nigga spit get on you. <laughs> right? This is 1975. He goes, That shit will go right through you. And he closed the window. And me and the other kids sat there and looked at each other like we had never heard. Like I heard nigger on a Richard Pryor album. Yeah. Like that was it. Yeah. For him to yell it, that was the most rate. And Marlo just kept spitting at the white kid like nothing happened. <laughs> Marlo didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Damn, man. Ah, that is great. Up, well, that man. hut is gone. Yeah. My point is, <laughs> the hut and its racism is gone, right? It's out of it last night. Yeah. The five and a half hour flight with the fucking baby. Oh, that's miserable, dude. See, by myself, I'll eat a fucking pot cookie. Right. And I get stoned. You and I the fall family. asleep for half. But when you have the family, you gotta you got be. And I got caught smoking vapor on the fucking pen. Mm. Tremendous. Mm -mm. I had one of those uh, vapor pens, and I just filled it up. It was it was it just brand new. I took the inhaler with me. They have mm -hmm. an asthma inhaler now, so I took for the, the pot for the reefer. That yeah. Oh, it, it's dabs. It fucks you up. So I took that with me to New York, and I sprayed it twice. You know, a couple times on the plane, and it kept me there. And then I hit it when I was in New York, and I hit it with Ari when I went over to see the tree and the fucking uh, Saks Fifth Avenue and all that shit. And I ran out, so I had this brand new tube. It's a gram of oil from Perennial. And I opened it up before I got on the plane. I charged Smoke. it up. First 10 hits, it's like fucking death hits. Like, they just fucking clouds of smoke. So I hit it two times. Then I got on the plane. And like two hours into the flight, I look at my daughter. And every time I would hit it, it would go by my daughter because she had the window seat. So I go, I can't let her have it. So I go, let me go to the bathroom. I'm Damn. in the bathroom with the fucking iPod on, listening to Pink Floyd. No, you're not. <laughs> yes, yeah. I am. I got the Double iPod plane, on. Bro. This is how fucking crazy <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm not listening. It's Wish You Were Here. That's the album I'm listening to because it was like Shine On You Crazy Diamond what? and Have a Cigar. I'm f I ate edibles. I had a, I had like three, four red stars. Oh, so you had a little magic in your system. Oh, I was fucked. I had, I was fucked up for the first two and a half hours because I got... I didn't get fucked up on the way there, and it made a big difference. I got agitated on the two-hour mark. On the two-and-a-half-hour mark, if you don't have something, once the move, once Mad Max is finished, right. you're ready to kill a motherfucker <laughs> on a flight. Mad Max is not the movie to watch on a fucking plane, because there you are sitting there. Everybody's driving, jumping over people and shit, shooting motherfuckers, and you're sitting there next to like some fucking politician or some shit. You want to get up. You want to get up. So I said, fuck that. So I dosed myself on the way out. Damn. I had Virgin. I had uh, Main Cabin Select. It's the one behind First Class. Mm -hmm. So we could all sit together because in First Class, we couldn't all sit together. I would have to sit by myself, and she'd be fucking crawling back and forth. So we're like, fuck that. Just get the Main Cabin Select. How tall is the child you have? She's a fucking midget. She's three. You know, She's just a little baby. But how tall do you think she is? Uh, She's up to... Oh, that's two. that's not very tall. No, she's a little baby. Oh, that's not so very tall. So I got up, I go to the bathroom, I close the fucking door, and I'm in there, and I'm hitting this pen, and I see clouds, Theo, and I'm like, wow. What and color I'm was that? Fucking clouds of smoke, and I'm hitting this vapor. 
and I'm hitting this fucking sap. <laughs> With your iPod on. With the iPod on, <laughs> listen to fucking fuck? shine on, you crazy diamond. And all of a sudden, I hear, <laughs> and I see the little red light going on. They're like, open up. Are you smoking in there? And I put the thing in my pocket, <laughs> and I take this out, and I blow a couple clouds of this shit. And I go, hold on. Like, I'm putting my dick in my pants, which I really did piss. And then I fucking wash my hands. And I open up and I go, what's the problem? And she goes, were you smoking in here? I go, no. Wow. I go, do I look like I was smoking in here? <laughs> do I look and like And she it? looked at me. She goes, does this smell like smoke? And she took, oh, they take everything out. The garbage. They do everything. They look for really? the cigarette. Yeah. Oh, wow. And now, what were you doing the whole time? Just standing there I'm like. I'm standing there going, I don't do know anything. what happened. I banged it. When I came in, the plane shifted and I hit the wall. And that's the next thing you know, you people were knocking on my thing. And they're like, we don't smell no smoke. I wonder what made it go off. And I'm sitting there going, they fucking know. They're just playing. Me. Oh, really? But then they were cool the rest of the flight. Espionage, bro. I sat there. They were cool. And then at the end, I gave my wife the keys. I told my wife, I go, listen, they called me in the bathroom. Uh, I'm going to get arrested, so take the car keys. I'll see you at the house. What did she say? She just fucking looked the other way and like shook her head. What is my wife going to fucking say at this age? Damn. I'm 50. What, what are you going to say to me? You're punished? <laughs> Well, that, <laughs> and then I walked off the fucking plane like I owned LA. Wow. Nobody said dick to me. I and was that like, was, did you think though somewhere in your head that whenever you got to LA there was going to be people? Oh there? fuck yeah! They've been waiting uh, for me before. I've been approached at the plane one time on the way to Columbus. I is it kind of cool or is it just fucking not cool? If you're getting off a plane, you got an ounce of weed in your nutsack. Yes, yeah, it ain't fucking cool. Be uncomfortable. But if you get off the plane and you're cool, you know you don't like the one time I was in Columbus, I had weed on me, and some guy said. I didn't do nothing. He leaned back and I go, hold on one second. He turned around. He goes, fuck you. So I said, fuck you. Or something. I kicked the chair and he went and told the story. So I was the bad guy the rest of the fucking flight. Damn. Oh, jeez. And then do you start to feel like the fucking bad guy too? You're like, oh, you oh, want a bad guy? You oh, start yeah. saying shit in your head. You yeah. want a fucking bad guy? Fuck with me, cocksucker. Put that seat back again. Yeah. And here's what happened. We went to Columbus. They got us off the plane. They got uh, statements from both of us and they let us go. And a year later, I got on the plane. That same fucking guy's on the uh -huh. plane. I go, how you doing? <laughs> and he just sat there the whole time like a little fucking. So in all your years Animal. Of, of being on the plane and like having weed under your nut and all that, you never once smoked a cigarette in the plane? No. Wow. In 1983, I was flying You used to be to, able to, didn't you? Yeah, you could smoke in the, fly, in the flights. In I Russia, was, you can't have heard. Really? Mm-hmm. You could do you anything smoke? in Russia. Uh-uh. No, no, but, but I heard that you can, though. You could smoke in the... In like certain areas, you could smoke on a plane. But I tell you what, I did see one fucking time though. Uh, fuck, you broke my taint. I don't even know what I was gonna say to you. Next smoking time. on a plane. Smoking on a plane. Smoking on a Russia. Plane. You never once smoked on a plane, yeah? No, but in 1984, February 1984, I got on the plane in, in Aspen. It was Aspen, Denver, Denver, Jersey. And on the way back from Denver to Jersey, there was a soldier next to me, and I had a brown bowl and weed. And I'm like, you want to get high? That's when you could smoke cigarettes on a plane. Hey. And he's like, let's go do it. We went to the back fucking other thing. Me and this guy had a wooden fucking bowl. I put the weed in there. We each took two puffs. The fucking whole plane smelled of like course. weed. Of course. Wow. They were pissed. Who's smoking marijuana on the plane? We're going to search. They didn't do shit. I walked out of there with that soldier saluting the cops <laughs> and shit. You got to take a chance from time to time. You know? For a soldier, you got to, bro. I get a soldier high. Fuck out. I get him. Doped out of his brain if I had enough dope for him. They fucking press heavy duty charges on you one night, Theo Vaughn. I got so fucked up in an airport. I had 12 ounces of blow on me. And what? I was coming from New Jersey. No. Do people story. from New Jersey get busted for coke more often than other I people? Don't, I don't fucking know. I, I was a fucking criminal. And I was I was living in I was living in Aspen and Coke was eighteen hundred and eighteen hundred an ounce. Right. And I'm like, are you fucking people kidding me? I'm paying 800 and they're fucking beautiful ounces. And I could cut it and still make money. I go, fuck it. So I started getting guns and bringing them to the East Coast and started bringing Coke back. But this was the problem, that I would take the 1 o'clock flight from uh, New Jersey to Denver, and that's really 3 o'clock, which would get me in there like at 7, mm -hmm. and it would start snowing. I still had to take a connecting flight from Denver to Aspen. Um, that flight would always get canceled. Here I am in Denver Airport with geeked. 12 ounces of blow, geeked out of my face at the fucking bar. I remember one night I was at the bar just drinking, fucking doing lines in the bathroom. And I kept putting the Coke in a locker, and I kept spending all my money in quarters taking the Coke out. And I became friends with a guy at a bar, and me and him started snorting. We got fucking lit at 6 a.m. 
I stayed in the airport all night getting fucking Fuck. coked up, jerking off in the men's store, oh. in the fucking bathroom. That is dark and that awesome. That is fucking, yeah, yeah. Dude, dark that's life. the dark side. Oh, my God. That's the worst, bro. When you're just up with your fucking ideas, feeling your fucking pulse. <laughs> <laughs>